it's Saturday morning. I've got nothing to do, so I'm heading out with my camera to hopefully spot some nice bird life. Um, it's a beautiful day. The sun is out. It's pretty cold out there. I'm testing out my new vlogging camera, my little Osmo Pocket 3, and hopefully the footage is going to be stable. It doesn't look very stable at the moment. But... Not entirely stable. I'm glad you're here to tell us these things. Um, I'm just jumping on the awesome A12, which is always closed and always busy. Actually, look, all the traffic is flowing, which is pretty cool at the moment. Don't want to speak too soon. I've got no wood to touch. Um, but yeah, I'm heading down to Fingering Ho Wick, which is just the other side of Colchester. And I'm going to go and check out and see what's on show there. But I've got another little toy that I want to test out whilst I'm there. Uh, the very kind people at Zeiss have sent me a thermal scope. One of the DTI scopes, which uh, I've been reading about. I saw them at the bird fair as well. And I was intrigued just to see if it would enhance my uh, spotting capabilities, but we shall see, eh? Did I just say spotting capabilities? Mm, that's an interesting turn of phrase. Right then, so I've just landed at the Essex Wildlife Trust Fingering Her Wick, which is in Colchester, or just the other side of Colchester. So I thought I'd come down here today just to uh, see what's about. Hopefully maybe some marsh harriers and other bits and pieces about. So I've got my big camera. But one of the key reasons I'm here is to test out a new bit of kit. So I've just been lent, lent, a thermal scope from the good people at Zeiss. Now I've got it for a couple of weeks just to test it out and see what it's like. So I thought I'd bring it down here, switch it on, give it a go, see what I can see. I'm super passionate about photography and I'm always on the lookout for ways to enhance my so-called spotting capabilities. Sorry, this could be right up my street. So, thermal scopes, what do we know about them? Well, I don't know a great deal about them. I've done a bit of research and obviously seen them through uh, films and productions. Classic predator moment of seeing Arnie in his rainbow outfit. But other than that, really, I've seen them on scopes, on rifle scopes, and they use throughout the industries for heat detection. Uh, the drones are using them quite a lot now. But for nature watching, it's new. There's certainly nothing wrong with new. Change can be a good thing. Adapting to the times is so important, and if thermal becomes part of the photographer's everyday arsenal, I'm open-minded and I'm ready to embrace it. And there's not a lot on show here, I'm afraid. A mm, couple of coots. A heron sitting over the back there. And then a little white, that's a little white egret. Uh, yeah, that's kind of about it here at the moment. A couple of duck down here, a little grebe just dive there. Yeah, super quiet. <laughs> so, thermal scopes for this kind of situation. Well, there's some darker parts of the, the tree line just sort of in front of this hide, which could hide a multitude of different small birds. And I guess if you were really, really wanting to ID that little tiny speck over in one of these, these thickets here, then, then yeah, it would be ideal. Um, I think in the light that we've got at the moment, my binoculars kind of do what they need to do. They're very clear, very bright lenses. So, you know, at the moment I can deal with this. But as soon as that light dips, I think the thermal scope will come into its own. It's a beautiful day, be it a little quiet on the wild side. 
but it's the perfect time to sit down and explore this intriguing piece of tech. So in here, we've got the little thermoscope, so, and this is it. It's very small, about the size of my hand. I'll just show you the size of my hand here. But it's quite simple in its, in its, in its making, in this version anyway. Uh, we've obviously got the lens at the front here, and then the screen at the back here. And then on top, we've got a number of functions that we use to operate it. And yeah, so it's kind of the form factor of it. Feels quite nice. It's pretty small in the hand. You can put it in your pocket. It's you know a nice size. And obviously you've got the Zeiss logo on here, so you're always going to get get like the best optics, whatever. So I think that's a glass optic on the front, and everything else is, I guess, mechanical inside. Uh, the screen here is you can change the focus on it with this little wheel here. And as I say. You can flip through different options on here. So, so basically you've got an on and off button here. You've got a video recorder or a photo record if you want. You've got a zoom in and out. And then you've got the switching the functionalities between you know, seeing that rainbow look and feel to uh, red hot, white hot, green, red, all sorts of lovely uh, different ways to visualize what you're looking at. Um, the most time that I've actually played with this, I've used something called Red Hot, so it gives you a kind of a very grey screen, but then anything that's got a thermo image or it's got a heat source, it, it shines up in red, so you get that nice contrast. And obviously the, the, the most famous one that people sort of probably know more is the rainbow um, effect that you get, which is, again, that predator feel, and it is, it is it's good, it shows you obviously cold for blue, red, and it kind of does all those sort of in-between colours. But for me, just from a quick, from a speed point of view, the, um, the, the contrasting grey to the red, uh, it just seems to be better for me. Yeah, but I'm going to see how this works in a practical sense, as in me using it now. Just before we do that, let's see what we get in the box. Packaging is first class, as you'd expect from Zeiss. Once opened, you're presented with the scope, a couple of straps, one for the camera and one for the case, charging cables, and of course, the user manual. The zip padded case offers great protection for the scope, and once inside, getting rid of the unnecessary foam blocks you finally get to the good part. And that's pretty much about it. Right, let's get back to the reserve. It's late afternoon now, and I'm finding it increasingly difficult to find willing subjects. This thermal scope, so I've been told, works great in the light, and I really want to put it for its paces, as the majority of camera work is in the daytime. And then I spot something. In order to record my first sighting, I have to link the thermal scope with the Zeiss hunting app, which was really easy. This allows me to record either photos or video direct to my device. Ah, oh, that is awesome. A pair of feeding munchak in the clearing. And although it may not be the rarest of species, it's our first. The winter light is fading fast, and I'm still wanting more. There's not been a lot on show today, but I do have a plan B. So, actually, that was a lot more difficult than I first anticipated, so... 
I think I'm going to have to move on, but I think I know somewhere to go. Heading homewards, I've got all ten fingers and nine toes crossed for another opportunity. Don't ask. My day mission was slow. Let's hope the night brings more success. Right then, so we've just pulled up to an open field where I know there are some deer here, deer here, and I can't see anything. I've got the light on the car, a little light up here as well. So literally, I can just see black all the way around me. So no visual, so just open up the window and grab my scope, switch it on. Okay, we're rolling. Let's have a look and see what we can see. Using the front wheel and just to get the focus and yeah, I've got deer in front of me. Uh, I would say maybe a couple of, maybe 150 meters away. That's quite a big, there's quite a big herd of them actually. <laughs> I would say there's maybe 40 there in total. And they have definitely heard me, but they're not crazy spooky, which is quite nice. Can't see any big stags there. Look all fairly young, but how cold is that? <laughs> so I'm I'm flitting between the different modes. Um, as I say, I like the the red hot, which kind of gives you a kind of a, a, a kind of a grey background. But anything that's you can feel the heat just picks up, you know, the red. So it's a big contrasting image. And they are. As I say, there's quite a few of them there. <laughs> this thing is it's very clever. You know, obviously I'm using it as sort of night vision really, you know, which is I guess what it what it is for, but uh, uh flick fl flick between the different modes. Uh <laughs> it's really clever. Really clever. Wow. I can hear them over there. There's quite a few of them. <laughs> that is awesome. When I use the, uh, the zoom, it does get a little bit pixelated, um, which I guess it's just a digital zoom on that main image. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's actually much easier to, to spot what they are uh, from the full distance out. And, and they get a bit spooky. They are moving. <laughs> this is really clever. As I was flicking between the different modes, the rainbow mode and, and the you know the blue and the red and green. But actually I think definitely I think the rainbow is it's interesting. It's a bit pixelated as I say, but that that, that red hot is much better. <laughs> That's really clever how that would benefit me in the field with my camera obviously we're not going to be filming tonight or doing any photographs unless you get the flash out which is a no-no um, but just to spot where they are and you know you could almost i suppose mark these locations because you know that they'll look safer in these places i mean I, I am in the middle of nowhere there are open fields all the way around me so and i kind of know that they are here i have been here in the daytime so it'd be interesting just to uh you know come back again and see if they come back because then you can pinpoint different species in different locations which is nice but this thing definitely helps in that way obviously i'm seeing complete black out there now but when i get this up uh, they are moving off now but you can spot every single one of them. <laughs> it's really cool. So this little baby, the thermo imaging camera from Zeiss, it's been a real joy to use. And you know, would I would I buy one? I'm not sure. I, only because 
it is £1,600, it's a lot of money, um, but as a wildlife enthusiast and somebody who wants to see species or spot species in low light situations or in difficult situations, it is a must. It really is a must. Um, I'll tell you what, this thing has made me get out more. You know, most of the time when people think about, you know, as soon as that sun goes, they go, you know. But with this, you can stick around and see what's crawling about at night, which is really, really interesting. It's great to see, you know, the deer come out and feed and different bird species, see what they do at night. The image itself, it's okay. I mean, this is the low end, well, the baby brother of the group. I think there are two or three different other versions and it's, yeah, it's, it's okay. Through the uh, Zeiss hunting app, it does give you the capabilities to record and I have done a few sort of test pieces. From a video point of view, it's okay. But from an actual practical tool point of view, it's really, really clever. I mean, as a unit, it's easy to carry. It's something you could just put in your pocket or you know, put in your bag and have a wander around. But it does give you a completely different angle of finding or searching out species that you wouldn't normally see certainly in the you know in the low light situations but i think in the daytime uh, yeah i did use it it was okay um, i think if i had the bigger one of this the big brother which is a lot of money um, i think that would probably be more beneficial um, but as a quick tool that you want to go out with in the evening and see if there's deer in your garden or certain species, whatever it is, this is a very clever piece of kit. If you want more information on the Zeiss DTI thermal camera, visit www.zeiss.co.uk.